I'm not allowed to put live people on a stamp. And, Is that true? And, yeah, be- because otherwise, if you put a live person on, they might do something naughty later. Exactly, and, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. You don't be licking the backside of... <laughs> Smashing Security, episode 330. Deepfake Martin Lewis and a deadly jog in the park with Carol Terrio and Graham Cluley. Hello, hello, and welcome to Smashing Security, episode 330. My name's Graham Cluley. And I'm Carol Terrio. Hi, Carol. How are you doing? I'm great. More to the point, how are you? Well, it's been a crazy few days. A number of things (laughs) have occurred. Um, The first is that I've moved house. I'm literally surrounded by boxes full of leads, as if my life isn't always surrounded by boxes full of leads and technology. I was going to say. Yes, things I don't (laughs) understand. Things like, why have I kept that? What am I doing with this? And also, I've had huge huge uh, internet problems because uh, I thought I thought I'd organized for the internet to be here but it turned out I hadn't so and that is why we're recording <laughs> just mere hours before we go live just hours and uh, we had to say no to our guest this week because oh. uh, you had to change the times from when we were recording because oh, of your internet don't woes. Don't remind me. Sorry, guest. Sorry, guest. We'll have you back on another time. Very soon because she's great. How do you feel about getting the show on the road? Let's do it. But before we kick off, let's thank this week's wonderful sponsors. We have Collide, Sysdig, and Drata. It's their support that helped us give you this show for free. Now, coming up in today's show, Graham, what do you got? Well, going for a jog can be bad for your privacy, but even worse for your health. (laughs) Okay. And I'm going to look at the bamboozling and deeply convincing deep fakes. All this and much more coming up on this episode of Smashing Security. Now, chum chum, I am indebted this week to one of our friends on Reddit. Uh, Frightenstein is his or her name. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and uh, they pointed me towards this story, which comes from the Kiev Post all the way in Ukraine. And uh, okay. I- interesting story. So there is this chap. His name is, and I, I apologize uh, to uh, anyone listening who uh, has a better understanding of names from that sort of general part of the world than myself, Stanislav Rzitsky. And uh, Stanislav Rzitsky. Uh, he likes to, he likes to keep fit. I mean, don't we all? Maybe we could just call him Stan. We call him Stan. Well, we, no? we, we can. Or Slav. Stanislav. We could just Stanislav. Call him. Stanislav. Stanislav. Anyway, so okay. he, he likes to keep fit, right? Stanislav. He likes to keep fit. And um, on Monday, Monday of this week, in fact, he went out for a jog as normal. Just went out for a jog. Likes to keep fit. You, you and I, Crow, we 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 you know we we love a bit of fitness. Love running around the park. You know, improving our PB, well, our personal best. You, you get do, on your rowing I machine. I'm very fit, Graham. I know you I'm are. You are fit. like, oh, you're like a piece of pink steel, aren't you? You are just, you're just all sinew and, aren't you? That's all you are. So rude. One would think you're jealous. Danislav. <laughs> he went out for a jog, as normal, around his local park in the city of Krasnodar, which is in southern Russia. Um, okay. Do you, have you ever been into jogging? Yes, yes. We had a little stint of jogging, you and I, once long ago. We did, didn't we? It, we did pretty well. And it wasn't just once, was it? We used to go out every lunchtime going for a little jog. Hurts the knees eventually, I found. But um, Oh, well, you're a little older than I am. So. Now, Stanislav, uh, he won't be going out jogging anymore. He's not going to be doing that. Not because he hated the jog, not because his knees hurt or something like that. What happened? Because someone shot him dead. Well, I was wondering, is he, it's kind of a war area. I didn't know if people would go jogging. I don't know. I don't know anything about war, so. Well, he's he's in Krasnodar, which is in Russia. Right. He's not in Ukraine, but it is true to say that he is the deputy chief. He is a military man. He's the deputy chief of the Department for Mobilization in Krasnodar, and he has commanded a submarine in the Russia's Black Sea Fleet, a submarine which is said to have been used to launch deadly missile attacks 
against Ukrainian cities. So he, he is involved in the conflict out there. Yeah, I would call that involved. Yes, yep. absolutely. He's quite, yep. quite involved. Yep. Understatement of the year, but yeah. But presumably he felt safe jogging around Krasnodar in Russia. And according to TASS, which is the Russian state news agency, they say uh, that local police are reporting that he was shot four times while he was out jogging. Police are investigating, blah, blah, blah. Now, it hasn't been confirmed who actually killed Stanislav Rzitsky. But what happened as well on Monday was that Ukraine's Defence Intelligence Agency, mm. who are called HER, the H-U-R, um, they say, well, they seem to know quite a bit about the shooting. And they filled in some of the details when they posted on Telegram about it. According to them, Stanislav, he loved to have a little run early in the morning. They say he was out jogging in the Krasnodar Park of Culture and Recreation. That Have you ever heard a more... <laughs> A more Russian name for a park <laughs> than the Park of Culture and Recreation. Anyway, <laughs> he was out at around about 6am and they say that seven shots fired out at Stanislav from a Makarov pistol. Now, I, I find that, it's like, how would they know what kind of pistol was used? Peculiar, mm. doesn't it? Like, how would they know? Anyway, they say it was from a Makarov pistol. And as a result, Rosicki, they say, died on the spot. And they share some other information as well about the weather, um, which is always important. Everyone's interested. They say due to heavy rain, the park was deserted. So there were no witnesses who could provide details or identify the attacker. And this is Ukraine. Because no one was around except for the guy who decided right. to go for a run in the rain. At 6am. At 6am. He's hardcore. Yeah. Yeah, he's hardcore. He's taking this seriously. So th they were fairly confident the shooter had got away unseen. That was their opinion, was that, you know, it been matched. Now, the FSB, Russia's secret service, they later uh, issued a press release saying that a 64-year-old man had been arrested in relation to the killing. So the question, well, there's a few questions here. First of all, how did Ukraine's Defense Intelligence Agency appear to know so much about this if they weren't involved themselves? But also, how did the shooter know that Rosicki, if he was being specifically targeted, how did they know where he was going to be and when? Oh, well, okay. Mm -hmm. Often I would say runners mm -hmm. would normally take the similar route. So That's if you true. were spying yeah. on this person, you might mm -hmm. go, oh, he runs every day at this time in yes. this place. Yeah, yeah, that sounds possible. But I'm guessing, <laughs> I'm guessing, I'm guessing, because mm -hmm. this is smashing security, <laughs> there is going to be some smart tech involved. There is. Uh -huh. Or maybe not so smart tech, perhaps. Yeah, dumb tech, asshole tech. <laughs> just, no, just, I don't know. <laughs> just tech. I mean, Miko says if it's smart, it's stupid, doesn't he? So anything yeah. which is called smart is normally dumb or dangerous. Well, we don't know for sure. But what we do know is that there is a Strava profile for someone calling themselves Stanislav Rzitsky. And that of course, Strava, of course, is the app which records, runs, shares them with other online users. And we've spoken before about the privacy risks associated with Strava, even including military and uh, information about military bases, which has been a, a seemingly spilt online via Strava, but I don't think we've ever heard about blood being spilt before as a result of maybe things being posted on Strava. It's interesting because people on YouTube or whatever or, or commenters and that kind of ilk will often have a username mm. that doesn't necessarily identify them to their yes. uh, real identity. And yet with Strava, because probably there's a show off element to it, like, <laughs> hey, look what I did today. I actually right? exercised. Yeah, you know, I'm a top yes. leaderboard. I'm the best. Uh, you know, and yeah. I do run every day. Yeah. Here's proof. So maybe there's that weird show offy yeah. thing that makes people put in their real names because, like, why wouldn't you just have a username? I think that's very true. Yes, yeah, so you don't call yourself sort of, yeah, you know, sausage dog or something like that. Yeah. You call yourself. Well, you could, Graham. I think maybe, Graham. you know. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should be a sausage dog. <laughs> No, not only is there an account on Strava in Stanislav Rosicki's name, there are also photos posted on the account, which do apparently bear more than a passing resemblance to the Russian commander as well. And 
There's a cycle ride, which was recorded on the hills outside the city of Krasnodar in the weekend before he was shot dead. Um, and indeed, the last run which was taken shows him at the location of the shooting. So it appears that this guy had recorded on Strava, because that's the way it works, Kroll, is if you have something on Strava, it doesn't sort of live stream it to Strava. At the end of your run, you then say, oh, yes, send that to Strava, please. That's one I'm proud of. And then it uploads it and says, this is the time. Here's the route you took. This is how long. Right. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't necessarily be the case that the, the run he did, which he you know, obviously came to a sticky end on, that one was uploaded. But his previous run is there. So was someone watching his runs? Well, we don't know for sure. But here's the really weird thing. If you look him up on Strava, if you look at his last recorded run, which was at the location where the shooting took place, it has been liked by other people. Four other people have liked his run. And one of the people who has liked his previous last run is a guy mm -hmm. called Kirillo Budanov. And he is a major general, Major General Kirillo Budanov, head of Ukraine's military intelligence. Now, dun, I put dun, it to dun. you that possibly <laughs> they are not running buddies, these two guys. Or I and put it to be... you, I put it to you that maybe one or both I put of it to these, you. <laughs> like, yes. there's a lot of conjecture here, right? Yes, like, yes. And, and as we've just said, maybe Major General uh, Kirillo Budinov is actually not Major General Kirillo Budinov, but a fake Strava... Uh, username. It could be in someone else's. To I mix mean, everything else. You know, I mean, there's an, no. Yeah, that'd be an interesting thing to do, actually, wouldn't it? If you wanted Russian assassins to go after the wrong people, you could hack other people's Strava accounts and use the names of senior Ukrainian military intelligence. Graham, I never knew what a military strategist you were. <laughs> or maybe just tie a Fitbit to a dog. And have it run round. Yeah, the that bar. that would not be. Uh, <laughs> he spent a lot of time in this hole. He spent a lot of time here. He's been <laughs> anyway. The Ukraine say you know these reports have no basis. Budinov himself says you know I don't know what they're talking about. Although he has previously admitted that Ukraine has successfully targeted prominent Russian propagandists who've been killed or wounded on Russian territory. Um, but once again, guys and gals, if you are using Strava, be really careful. Either don't use your real name. Perhaps. This is a pretty extreme case. Well, it is. Yeah, I know. But I, it sounds a bit like we're scaring the poop out of everybody that has Strava. So I would okay. say if you use Strava, maybe check your settings to make sure you're not broadcasting more than you want to be. Right. Yes. And know that these things change their settings with all, you know, the times you have to update your Strava. A lot of the times they're changing settings and they may default them to something that they think is easiest for you or most likely to be wanted by most, but it might be leaking more data than you wish it were. Is that fair? You can, yes. And you, can, you, you certainly can also uh, sort of slightly anonymize your start and end points on your run to hide where your home might be, things you can do like that. But I think also be very careful about who you friend on the app don't automatically accept friend requests because then you might be revealing uh you know details of your what do you think stanislav and uh budinov they did that well i don't know what the security was on, on right. stanislav's right. account but uh, i i would like to think that he had some measures in place but yeah maybe like i said they weren't actually running buddies but um yeah so strava security appears to have resulted in someone's death Am I saying too much saying that? Well, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is a completely inappropriate story for us at Smashing Security. Uh, a little bit too serious, but uh, thank you very right. much. Told okay. very well, I hope. Oh, thank you. Please, oh, fingers nice. crossed. Crow, what have you got for us this week? Well, we are going to talk about Martin Lewis. I'm not talking about an irritating chap I worked with yonks ago, but the very <laughs> popular journal, I think I can say. Unless you've spent significant time in the UK, I doubt you would know him, but in the UK, he's pretty well known. Graham, 
Yeah, he he's the money saving expert, guys. That's he? right. That's right. He's often on TV, and I have recently seen him. He's actually been sort of anchoring TV shows as uh-huh. well. You know, he's sort of been, he's taken the place of like Piers Morgan on Good Morning Britain or whatever it's called. He sometimes does sort of general news now, um, such as his celebrity. Yeah, it's quite, he's quite interesting. I did a little, you know, mild research on Wikipedia on him, right? Yeah. And it says Lewis created and ran the website Money Saving Expert, mm-hmm. right? Back in February 2003 when he launched it. And apparently he created the site for just 100 quid. Nine yep. years later, sold the website to moneysupermarket.com for 87 million, <sighs> but remained editor in chief. Yeah. The deal saw Lewis receive $35 million in cash up front, in addition to some $20 million in shares in the moneysupermarket.com and $27 million in future payments. So, <laughs> but he simultaneously announced his intention to give $10 mil to charity yeah. uh, and $1 mil would go to c- Citizens Advice. He seems like a good guy. He seems like a champion for people right? who are hard up. He, he, he often is out there having a go at the government or lobbying for things to improve and helping people get money off their energy bills. And yeah, he's, he, he seems like a, a decent chap. Yeah, he, maybe he should be on a stamp or something because, you know, he's trusted. <laughs> people like him. He's He seems to be doing the right things. He's always seems, you know, above board and trustworthy. You're not allowed to put live people on a stamp. And, Is that true? And, yes. You only put dead people? No, you're, Why? Because if you put a live person, they do something crappy. The only live people allowed on stamps are the, the queen or the king, you know, or it's like, you know, the regent. Otherwise, yeah, be, because otherwise, if you put a, you know, if you put a live person on, they might do something naughty later. Exactly. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you don't want to be licking the backside of... <laughs> <laughs> you do give like all kinds of royal awards to people that are still alive, like CBEs and, you oh, know, all these kind of things. That's an interesting idea. Maybe we should only do posthumous awards. Exactly. That way, just make sure we get the whole story right. before we decide, right. here you go. Right. Don't yeah. reward them in their lifetime for what they've done. Just say, you'll be <laughs> rewarded once you're dead. <laughs> Just a little bit more here on Martin Lewis that's worth mentioning mm. here for this story is in 2018, Lewis started legal action against Facebook for defamation over fake adverts using his face in name, yes. mostly promoting things like Bitcoin and investment, investing. Yeah. And he actually ended up later dropping the action after Facebook agreed to fund an anti-scam project. That's right. I think because Martin Lewis is someone in the UK that people trust. They use him in yes. sort of Bitcoin scams and his image and things. Whereas the rest of the world gets Elon Musk as someone you don't trust. It's like so very interesting. You bring him <laughs> oh, up, okay, right? Yes. Okay, because this this whole legal action was in 2018. That's five years ago. Mm. And what do you know? The scammers never let up using his credibility to dupe mm. mostly on social media ads. Mm. Mm. And now they're at it once again, but this time they upped their game and deep faked a video featuring the not real Michael Lewis. Oh. Featuring a deep fake of Michael Lewis. They didn't do the Mission Impossible thing of just wearing a mask and pretending to be Martin Lewis. They've actually <laughs> deep faked him. I guess because there's lots of video and audio of him in existence. Well, exactly. Right. So go take a look, Graham. Take a look. I've just put it in the show notes. Oh, okay. Let's have a look. Elon Musk presented his new project in which he has already invested more than $3 billion. Musk's new project opens up great investment opportunities for British citizens. No project wow. has ever given it's such pretty good, opportunities isn't it? to residents. It is actually. At first, I thought this seems a little bit stilted. It looks a little bit like he's on a Zoom call yeah, or something. But lots doesn't of it? people do but Zoom can't calls. Believe that he's re- right? like- well, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can believe he's just doing this down his webcam. And. It does sound like him, and it it looks like him. Uh, you know, it's it's the sort of way he may well speak. It's um wow, exactly. And isn't it funny that you brought up Elon Musk because this uh, fake likeness of Lewis is encouraging people to sign up for what is claimed to be an Elon Musk backed project, calling it legit and a great investment. Yeah. <laughs> And if you were looking at this on your phone as you're scrolling through social media, and you see this guy you trusted. 
right? And you weren't as familiar about these scams. It's just scandalous. It's scandalous. Now, of course, uh, this is not the first time that synthetic media has been used. That's another word for deep fake. Yeah. Synthetic media has been used uh, both to entertain and to bamboozle. But it's interesting to hear from those whose identities have been nabbed by miscreants because Martin Lewis did not take this sitting down. He hit the media roadshow. On BBC Radio 4's Today program, he said, this is the first deep fake I've seen with me in it. Listen to this. My face and name have been the subject of scam adverts for the last six or seven years. I get countless reports every day. Now they have video and audio technology that is absolutely replicating my face and my voice. These people are trying to pervert and destroy my reputation in order to steal people off, uh, steal money off vulnerable people. And frankly, it is disgraceful. Mm. And people are going to lose money and people's mental health is going to be affected. It has a massive impact on well-being when people are scammed. It's devastating for people's lives. And we still don't have any adequate re- regulation to deal with it. And he says, I have had friends of mine get in touch with me saying, hey, I've just put some money into that investment scheme you're advertising. Oh, come on. I has don't he re- advertise, he says. Oh, serious. Come on, have they really? Uh, friends of his, he says, have actually you know what? put the money in. I thought that too, but then I thought, you know what? He's such a nice guy. He probably has people who he's helped with in the past, oh, right? Who are in his email list. Right. You know, all these people with different skills, perhaps not techies. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. The, he's not alone, of course. There's even stars. Now, I, I'd be interested in seeing if you think this is a star being taken advantage mm. of or not. Mm. Um, so months ago, ITVX put out a show called Deep Fake Neighbor Wars. Have you heard of this? I think I've seen a bit of this. Yes. Okay, good, good, good. Because yes. I, I didn't know about this until research. So right. it features the celebrities or deepfake celebrities as roommates. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it spoofs the long running New Zealand TV format Neighbours at War. Mm-hmm. And it's still going strong. So apparently music artist Nicki Minaj was furious when she saw a deepfake of her sitting on a couch with Spider-Man actor Tom Holland. <laughs> she tweeted, I hope the whole internet gets deleted. And, you know, as far as I can see, it's all clearly labelled to be deep fakes and fakes and parodies. Oh, it's, it's totally a joke, yes, because it sort of puts them in sort of suburban settings and things and has them say... The, the, the main thing about that show is it's really astonishingly non-amusing. It's like they've got all the tech, but they haven't got any jokes. <laughs> but So it's clever deep fakery, but it's just like, oh, this is so dull. Um, and right now in the UK, we have a bit of a like little media storm mm. about a BBC presenter that may or may not have gotten up to shenanigans. Yes. And there's a whole war going on. But I shared with you a potentially deep fake image that kind of suggested who the BBC presenter might have been in a compromising position. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank you for sending that to me, uh, Carol, by the way. You know, not that I'd asked for it. But actually sending me that image. What was my question? I sent it to you to say, is this, do you think this is a deep fake? Because I was asked by somebody. Right. So I think absolutely it was. And I sent it to you thinking, what do you think? And really, we, you know, neither of us are sure. What were you expecting me to do? To do a, I couldn't take a fingerprint of it, maybe a bum print. I, there was a picture of a man with his trousers around his ankles. I wasn't sure how you expect me to identify whether it was... <laughs> the well person's known, face trusted, was in it as well, Graham. And beloved <laughs> BBC news anchor. And, but I'm just saying these things make the rounds and it, it go to you know convince certain people one way or another as to yeah. what to believe. Yeah. And it's pretty freaking scary. Well, it is. This is the um, whole problem, isn't it, with deep fakes? Is 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 that so much fake stuff can be made? And also, when something genuinely dodgy does happen that people will begin i think this has already begun to happen i've heard reports of when politicians have been in a spot of bother in in other countries and they've said well that must have been deep faked totally there's even one of boris johnson yeah and but you know it's it's even bigger than this ars technica Mm. uh, says we all need to be careful because in large hacks right, which maybe your details are somewhere in a third party's like an insurer's or a cloud service and baddies get in and get away with a glut of personal information like your driver's license, social insurance, health, pension information. Yes. This was the case when Progress Corp got hacked. The Massachusetts-based maker of business software revealed that its file transfer system had been compromised. Right. 
Yeah. And the article goes on at the California Public uh, Employees Retirement System. The Is it CLOP or CIOP hackers? Uh, CLOP, yes. CLOP, yes. Yeah. CLOP, yeah. Uh, CLOP made off with the personal data of about, you know, almost a million retired members and their survivors. Mm -hmm. The data of recently deceased Americans is particularly valuable on the underground markets. Because you open a credit card in a dead man's or dead woman's name, take out the loans, redirect social security payments, sign up for food benefits, who's going to ring the alarm? Yeah, good point. Yeah. You can't be protected from the scammers even after you're dead. No. And of course, the problem is, is many uh, state and uh, federal agencies use information stolen in hacks to verify identities of people. So if you've got your date of birth and photographs and names and home address and social security numbers. It's horrendous, isn't it? It is. So um, you're a security boffin. Uh, you know Hello. everything. Uh, yes, I do. Right. What would you do? What would you do if suddenly on the social media rounds there was like a, a deep fake Graham Cluley telling people to do incredibly stupid non security stuff? Well, well, like a, like like the things I spout on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, what can you do? I suppose you you can tell people that if it's authorized and it's really from me, it will be on my real website. Graham uh, you, you could you could do something like that, I suppose. But even that obviously could be hacked one day. Okay, well, what if you were on holiday, right? I knew you were on holiday and I get a phone call from yes. you, a deep fake you saying, oh my God, oh my God, help me, help me, I need help. Uh, do I just laugh and say, ha, 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 nice try? Normally you would, yes. Uh, but, <laughs> would uh, I? That <laughs> no, is you wouldn't. <laughs> you wouldn't. You wouldn't. You'd probably ask me a deeply embarrassing personal question, which only you and I know, knew the answer to. Um, and we never but, talked about it on the podcast. You see, that's the problem. We talk about a lot of things in the podcast. There's a couple of things we never have, though, Carol. That's true. A couple of that's things true. which we reserve <laughs> for those situations. <laughs> There's not much we haven't discussed. But just a couple of little things. Feeling like you have too many alerts, overwhelmed by vulnerabilities, and at the end of the day, not deploying apps as quickly as you'd like? Well, Sysdig delivers the industry's only complete consolidated cloud-native application protection platform, CNAP, powered by Runtime Insights, to prioritise critical risks and stay ahead of unknown threats. With Runtime Insights, you can level up your cloud visibility, shift left the right way, and start scanning for vulnerabilities earlier, shield right to protect your production environment, and keep dev teams innovating securely at cloud speed. Now is the time to transform your cloud security, so visit sysdig.com slash smashing to learn more. That's sysdig.com slash smashing. If you work in security or IT and your company has Okta, this message is for you. For the past few years, the majority of data breaches and hacks you read about have something in common. It's employees. Hackers absolutely love exploiting vulnerable employee devices and credentials. But imagine a world where only secure devices can access your cloud apps. Here, credentials are useless to hackers, and you can manage every OS, even Linux, from a single dashboard. Best of all, you can get employees to fix their own device security issues without creating more work for IT. The good news is, you don't have to imagine this world. You can just start using Collide. Collide is a device trust solution for companies with Okta, and it makes sure that if a device is not trusted or secure, it can't log in to your cloud apps. Visit collide.com slash smashing to watch a demo and see how it works. That's K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash smashing. Any company can say they're trustworthy, but with this week's sponsor, Drata, you can prove it. With over 14 frameworks, including SOC 2, GDPR, HIPAA, and ISO 27001, Drata gets you audit ready for crucial security standards needed to scale your business. Automated controls, over 75 integrations, and 24-hour monitoring keeps your company in compliance without manual work. 
And with a new open API and plenty of customization, you can build your program your way. With over 360 five-star reviews, Drata is the highest rated cloud compliance platform on G2. Countless security professionals from companies like Notion, Lemonade and Bamboo HR have shared how crucial it's been to have Drata as their trusted compliance partner. So, listeners of Smashing Security, you can get 10% off Drata and waived implementation fees at smashingsecurity.com slash Drata. That's smashingsecurity.com slash D-R-A-T-A. And welcome back. And you join us at our favourite part of the show, the part of the show that we like to call Pick of the Week. Pick of the Week. Pick of the Week. Pick of the Week is the part of the show where everyone chooses something they like. Could be a funny story, a book that they've read, a TV show, a movie, a record, a podcast, a website, or an app. Whatever they wish. It doesn't have to be security related necessarily. Better not be. Well, my pick of the week this week is not security related. I watched the other night a uh, programme on BBC iPlayer. Now, Carol, it is a documentary. You know I love documentaries. I'm just, yeah, I know. You just mix it up a bit. Mix it up. Mix it Look, up. Hey, you quite often... Okay, I'm doing a podcast as well, so you're fine. <laughs> oh, you're right. Okay, so there you go then. So <laughs> this is a documentary called My Old School. And my old school tells the tale of the curious case of Brandon Lee. Have you heard of Brandon Lee? Yes, but remind me. Well, the famous Brandon Lee is the son of Bruce Lee, who died on the uh, set of The, the Crow. Crow. I think he got shot or something, didn't he? Ka, ka, fuck your dead. That was a line. That was a line from the movie. F- what? Really? <laughs> I wrote a newspaper article on it in, in college. Yeah. All uh, oh, right. I've never seen it. Is it good? Good movie, okay. The Crow. Um, yes, it is. I slated it at the time. Right. This has nothing to do with that Brandon Lee. This is a different Brandon Lee. Oh. And okay. in 1993, so 30 years ago, a boy named Brandon Lee enrolled at the Beersden Academy Secondary School in Glasgow, and over time. It was revealed that Brandon Lee was not who he seemed. So this 16, 15 year old, 16 year old boy joined the school. And in fact, the truth is he was actually a 30 year old man who Shut joined up. the school. Po- no, no, it gets more bonkers than that. He was 30 pretending to be 16. Correct. But you know what's particularly extraordinary? is that he had actually been a student at the same school years before, and he ended up having some of the same teachers teaching him who didn't... And then no one noticed. I him. No one noticed. Now, some people said, you know, oh, he did look a bit older than the rest of us, and they thought it was just his premature aging or something. Um, Once almost rumbled because he told a friend he remembered the day Elvis Presley had died, which was supposed to be in the year he was... He was actually born. <laughs> yes, yeah, so he wouldn't have remembered that <laughs> anyway. That's the year, yeah. No, no, exactly at yeah. that age. Um, but also, um, sometimes uh, people w- wondered about him and he posed as a Canadian. He claimed to be Canadian. and Of course he did. The Scottish students said, well, maybe, maybe Canadian students mature more quickly than British students. And that way he seems more grown up and knows an awful lot more. It's all that fresh air and trees and clean lakes. (laughs) But he wasn't Canadian at all. He completely fooled them. He went on to college because he he got his, passed his exams. His high school exams. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. And he, but he went on to go and study (laughs) medicine. And the whole reason was that he had previously wanted to become a doctor, but he goofed up on his first time around. And then he was too old to do the medical training. So what he decided to do was pretend to be a kid again and go through the process again. So it is an extraordinary documentary. Now, he, this this chap, Brandon Lee, his real name was Brian McKinnon. He doesn't appear in the documentary, but a lot of his fellow students at the time did. And they, they talk about it. There's some cartoon imagery and things. But what they do is they have an audio interview with this guy and they have Alan Cumming. You know, the ex-Scottish actor Alan Cumming? He's a bit camp. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. He, he is miming 
to Brandon Lee slash Brian McKinnon's words. Oh. So he plays the part. But other than that, it's just a regular kind of documentary. Do you see pictures of him at 30? Uh, well, you, the, the, yes, you do, because he was actually even caught on video because they actually recruited him to play the lead in South Pacific in the musical. <laughs> he, so they have video of him singing and also, rather creepily, he kisses one of the uh, his fellow schoolgirls as part ew, of the play. Um, so he, yeah, yeah. And she, she feels a bit ooh about that now as well. Um, I bet she does. Anyway, My Old School, interesting documentary about an extraordinary story, which is why it is my pick of the week. Okay, I'll give you that one. Sounds good. Sounds good. Crow, what's your pick of the week this week? Um, I was going to do an audio podcast, like a fiction one. But since it's just the two of us, I've changed it up and grabbed right. something from my bag of tricks that I thought you oh, yeah. would enjoy. So, Graham, my pick of the week this okay. week is a podcast, not an audio drama, but a sartorial mm. news show called Good. Non-Censored with Rosie Holt. Have you heard of it? I've been listening to it for months. No. Oh, brilliant. Yes. Well, I didn't know that. And isn't that lovely? So uh, for our listeners, <laughs> Rosie Hull is an emerging UK comedian. She kind of rose to fame on YouTube during lockdown uh, by playing a right wing activist and conservative reacting to lockdown parliamentary shenanigans while people were locked in their houses and not being able to go to work or to funerals or to hospitals. And she says she got angry during this whole fiasco with Parliament having parties. And she says when she gets angry, she likes to laugh at things that make her angry. So she she used <laughs> yeah. existing footage with, you know, responses from actual parliamentarians from, you know, say, Good Morning, you know, Britain or all these kind of shows. But she spliced herself in as the interviewer. And you guys can see these on YouTube's so link in the show notes. That's how I first came to know her, is I saw her on Twitter and Instagram with these little videos, which were quite funny. But then, of course, I found out yes. about the Non-Censored podcast, which I really enjoy. Yes. So this podcast, Non-Censored with Rosie Holtz, okay, she plays a right-wing conservative MP called Hillary Langley Swindon, which I love that she used the name Swindon. <laughs> so perfect. And she's ably assisted by her long-suffering producer, Martin, and provocative comedian Ashan Akbar. And it's a topical podcast battling what Hillary, the protagonist here, calls the Wokies. Um, it's scathing. It's hilarious. <laughs> and she does not shy away from the most outrageous situations and questions <laughs> and jokes. Um, it's cringy, man. I've had to rip the headphones off my head occasionally because I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't, I can't, I can't. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I like it a lot. It's very fun. So, listeners, this is Non-Censored with Rosie Holt. It's a podcast. Find it wherever you get your podcasts. But warning, this is satire. Don't get your knickers all in a twist. She's just being funny and being quite bravely funny. Um, and that's my pick of the week. Good one. And that just about wraps up the show for this week. You can follow us on Twitter at Smash Insecurity. No G, Twitter and Mouse have G. And we also have a Mastodon account. And you can look us up on the Smash Insecurity subreddit. Don't forget to make sure you never miss another episode. Follow Smash Insecurity in your favourite podcast apps, such as Overcast, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And massive shout out to this episode's sponsors. Drada, Collide, and Sysdig. And of course, to our wonderful Patreon community. It's thanks to them all that this show is free. For episode show notes, sponsorship info, guest list, and the entire back catalog of more than 229 episodes, check out smashingsecurity.com. 329. 329. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. What am I doing with my life? Until next time, cheerio, bye-bye. Bye. All right, well, good luck moving um, beds and shelves and uh, Thank cutlery. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Shows. Yeah, it started going all wrong during Pick of the Week. I think there was a big pause, but it didn't seem to matter too much. But uh, I'll clean it up. I know you will. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.